The Long Road to True Happiness by Weird Rand and Tina. Chapter 26. Approval or Disapproval. Morning arrived for Branch after a long night of peaceful sleep. With a satisfying yawn and stretch, he sat up and recalled the only dream he had had last night. It was not a tragic or horrifying dream at all, but rather a wonderful dream and perfect scenario. Poppy had admired his romantic love confession poem, and she had confessed she has the same feelings for him. They had shared an intimate hug and two sweet little kisses. The memory of it all seemed so real. Branch's eyes flew open. It was no dream. A sharp puff of air escaped his, as his chest tightened enough to break his ribs. It was real. All of that really did happen last night. He flopped back down onto his pillow, suddenly too dizzy to move. His bout of reminiscing and daydreaming lasted longer than he had intended. He looked over at his clock and swiftly realised he was going to be late to the breakfast buffet if he didn't hurry up. With an uncanny burst of energy, Branch literally leapt out of the bed and rushed to get ready. Changing his clothes, brushed his hair, grabbed an apple to eat along the way, didn't bother to make his bed, and even skipped his daily coffee. There was no time, but he really didn't seem to need this one this morning anyway. Branch arrived at the designated destination right on time, but had to wait for the final large crowd to file through the entrance. Meanwhile, he peered over and through and around them, desperate to catch a glimpse of vibrant magenta, eager for proof that last night hadn't really been a dream. When he finally made it into the park, and finally spotted the love of his life in the distance, more vivid memories of yesterday attacked him. Anxiety, fear, relief, confusion, anticipation, hope, joy, embarrassment, love, whirled through him all at once. There were indescribable feelings he'd never felt before. Feelings he never thought he would ever feel. Roughly shaking his head and drawing a deep breath to compose himself, Branch forced his trembling legs to carry him over to her. He was certain his pounding heart could be heard over the chatter and music playing in the area. When Poppy spotted him in return, her fuchsia eyes lit up with so much love that his knees literally buckled. But she disregarded his inelegant little stumble. Instead, she shyly brushed off her fluffy magenta bangs away from her face, revealing more shining white freckles, and murmured in a cute little voice, Hi, I'm glad you were able to make it. Her smile was so flipping adorable. Branch swallowed the stone in his stomach. Her eyes were so flipping gorgeous. She was so sweet and friendly and caring, and she loved him. His mind was completely blank of all vocabulary. Come on, fuzz brain, say something! Yeah. Uh. Nope, that's all he had right now. But Poppy was not put off by his silence. Instead, she smiled even wider and said, Let's get in line so we don't miss out on the best food. She took his hand and pulled him alongside toward the beginning of the buffet. She did not release his hand, even as they began walking side by side. It made Branch a bit uneasy. Was she really going to hold hands with him, right out in public? Then he reminded himself that holding hands doesn't necessarily imply anything. Friends do it all the time too. As he glanced around, he was also comforted by the fact that no one was really paying attention to them anyway. As the pink and grey troll filled up their plates with a scrumptious breakfast variety, Poppy greeted every troll with an earshot. Her natural friendliness prompted a branch to say a few hellos here and there, not wanting to trail uselessly behind the princess like a shadow. A few trolls did stop to say a few words to him in return, and the grey troll's surprise this brief socialising wasn't making him uncomfortable or irritated. He didn't necessarily love it, but he was okay with it. Poppy and Branch settled under a mushroom tree alongside the outskirts of the park. They chatted casually, both exhibiting bits of shyness. She brushed her bangs out of her face far more times than necessary, 
while he fidgeted with his vest or the grass, or anything else he could get a hold of. She let out a nervous little giggle every so often, while he fumbled with the simplest of words. With their meal and conversation finished, Poppy announced she was needed to help host another breakfast-related activity at the far side of the village, and Branch decided to head back to his bunker for the day. They parted with just a casual hug-time hug. Their longing for a more affectionate hug was mutual, but both were still adjusting to the very recent and rather unexpected shift in their friendship. So, in between a little and a lot of affection, seemed like the perfect amount for now. Even still, Poppy was dreamy for the rest of the morning. So much so, that when she passed by Creek, she gave him a friendly greeting, completely forgetting their previous interactions. He returned her friendliness, after a split second of looking a bit surprised. Then the two trolls chatted comfortably for a few minutes, almost like old times. Creek went on to say, I feel awful for letting our friendship wither away, Poppy. I miss you terribly and I desperately want to make it up to you. The princess was elated. Finally! He was going to own up to his mistakes and was willing to set things right. They could finally be friends again. Maybe he'd even become friends with Branch. However, Creek's next words brought her hopeful spirits crashing down. Princess Poppy, I would like to ask you out on a date. Any place, any time you wish. We can take our relationship slowly. And I would be more than delighted to assist you with royal duties in any way you need. Poppy said nothing aloud, but her expression must have revealed the turmoil in her heart, as Creek instantly inquired, Is there a problem, Princess? Uh, no. There's not a problem, exactly. It's just... She didn't want to turn down his attempt at reconciling their friendship, but she couldn't go on a date with him. She no longer felt that way about Creek. Branch was the one she hoped to be with someday. She couldn't give Creek false hope and she would not betray Branch. Poppy took a deep breath to calm her nerves. I'm sorry, Creek. I really appreciate the kind offer, but I can't accept it. Creek's navy blue eyebrows furrowed. I'm afraid I don't understand. Where do I even start? Listen, I know this is going to upset you, but I have to be honest with you. I am so grateful for the amazing friendship we've had for so long, but I don't feel as close to you as I used to. I think we have... Perhaps that is due to the fact that you have been ignoring me for the past few weeks? Poppy's jaw dropped at his blunt interruption. She felt a spark of annoyance at his typical guilt trip while acting innocent approach, but she kept her tone level. I don't want to stir all that up again. I am more than willing to put that all in the past. I want us to be friends again, and I'd be happy to spend some time with you again, but only as friends, nothing more. I still care about you, but things have changed. As she trailed off, Creek's purple eyes narrowed. Is this your roundabout way of saying that you are interested in somebody else? Poppy's breath caught in her throat. She opened her mouth, but couldn't utter a single noise, let alone try to formulate an answer to the question. Creek took her hesitation as confirmation. He let out an exaggerated sigh then complained, how can there be anybody else? Think of everything you and I have been through over the years. I know you better than any troll in the entire village, and we would be so perfect together. I could be by your side when you became queen. He sighed again. May I at least know who the lucky troll is? Bobby was still flustered and tongue-tied, even more so now than she realised this conversation was going to end badly regardless of her answer. A lie would only cause more and bigger problems in the long run. Avoiding Queek's inquiry would only make him more persistent, and trying to change the subject would not deter him. The truth was the only thing she could say, but there was no way in hair Creek would be supportive of the truth. 
But she didn't need to say anything anyway. His eyes widened in disbelief, and she predicted his words a second before he spoke. Hang on just a second. Don't tell me it's branch. She gave up trying to formulate words. She opted to stay silent on purpose this time, and just let Creek figure it out on his own. Which he did. Very quickly. Well, congratulations, Poppy. I had no idea the princess started a side career as a comedian. Poppy frowned. I don't see why it's funny. Creek continued to grin smugly. Oh, it's not, princess. It's hilarious. The optimistic pink princess and the pessimistic grey hermit. Sounds like a poorly written fairy tale. The two of you go together as well as ice cream and mushrooms. His mocking tone made her little pink hands clench into fists. She did not like the bubbling feeling rising in her stomach. So what if we're different? It's not a bad thing. We go together really well because we're different. Oh, sweet Poppy. Creek took a few steps forward and put an arm around Poppy's shoulders. You don't need to feel obligated to pretend to like him just because he likes you. Poppy flinched at the accusation. She pulled away from Creek's hold. I'm not pretending. If you know me better than anyone, you should know that I would never do that. Branch is a wonderful and special troll. I truly love him. What is the matter with you, princess? Despite the spark of anger in Creek's eyes and the coldness of his words, his tone was as mellow as if he was instructing his yoga class. How can you want to be with someone like him? I know you're all about being everyone's BFF, but this is a tad excessive. That miserable troll will never treat you right. He just... He does treat me right. He treats me like... Like a queen. And not just because I will be queen one day. Poppy couldn't stand to hear another word from her former friend had to say about Branch. Her eyes were beginning to water but she continued with a distraught desperation in her voice. He is a gentle and thoughtful and smart and loyal. He always puts me before himself. He's always there for me when I need him. And he's honest and trustworthy. Now even Creek's voice was starting to rise in the slightest. Why must you keep bringing up the past? It was the only mistake I made. It was completely selfish and mean. You won't even try to make it right. You never said sorry to me or to Branch. Creek sighed heavily. Then, without even the slightest ounce of emotion, he recited, Very well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not saying sorry. I'm sorry I hurt your new crush's so-called feelings. I'm sorry I lied to you. I'm sorry I destroyed your flower fun festival. I'm so... He froze at his own words. Clearly, he had not intended to speak that part aloud. Poppy looked as startled as he did. She frowned as his blurted out words sunk in. Wait, what do you mean you destroyed the festival? Creek opened his mouth, then closed it again without a word. He tapped his foot and nonchalantly glanced off to the side giving up trying to resolve anything. Did... did you cause all that destruction? All the debris, the tables, the banner? That was all... you? She connected the dots. He watched with a blank expression and ice-cold eyes. All the hard work I did on the festival, and how upset and stressed out I was that it was ruined... You caused all of that, just to make Branch feel unwanted, and to trick me into hating him? I wanted him out of the picture once and for all. Don't you see? Everything was going perfectly between you and I. Until you started spending time with him. Don't blame this on Branch. Or me. Poppy thought the festival being destroyed was merely an accident, and Creek had taken advantage of the unfortunate circumstances. 
She was sickened to learn that Hei had not been an accident. And it was no coincidence. It was no mistake. The three of us could have become good friends. We could have all spent time together. We could have all been happy. It didn't have to be this way. Creek was even more self-centred and two-faced than Poppy originally thought. He will never care about Branch. Or me. The mauve troll retorted. You're absolutely right, Poppy. It doesn't have to be this way. In fact, I'm going to offer you a choice. Me or Branch. Either you stop seeing him, and I'll pretend the last few months never happened, so we can resume our amazing friendship. Or you continue to see him, and I will never speak to you again. It's entirely up to you. Poppy looked at Creek directly in the eyes. Her voice was strong and unwavering. I'm not giving up Branch! Creek clearly had not been expecting that option to be picked, especially with so little hesitation and so much certainty. He thought she would at least plead for a compromise. After a second, his expression turned as cold as a winter sky. So be it. Once Creek was out of any possible view, he was able to drop his laid back act. Stomping through the bushes, roughly shoving twigs and anything else out of his path, he cursed under his breath. How can Poppy just tossed me aside like a flipping rotten apple? And for that grain, nobody will trolls? So, uh, everyone makes mistakes and should be forgiven policy applies to all but me, does it? Taking a moment to look around at his surroundings, Creek realised he was heading in the direction of Branch's bunker. That gave the blue and green haired troll an idea that made him grin. If I can't change Poppy's mind, perhaps I can convince Branch to change her mind for me. It took some searching around, but Creek finally managed to find the recluse, digging around in his giant vegetable garden, located on the far side of his bunker. He guessed that trying to make Branch believe he means nothing to Poppy wouldn't work this time. So Creek decided to change his tactic. Branch was contentedly picking out weeds from around his vegetable plants, while letting the occasional sweet daydream of Poppy drift into his mind. When the most obnoxious voice in the forest spoke up behind him, Having fun tending to your fancy garden? Oh, silly me. I forgot. The word fun is not in your vocabulary, is it? Branch growled loudly. His decent mood instantly turned sour. Not even the lovely thoughts of Poppy could lift his mood with that slyball around. All he could think of now was how Creek had lied to her, deliberately hurt her, upset her, just to make himself feel better. It took all of Branch's willpower not to hair punch him in the face. Instead, the grey troll hurriedly stood up, brushed off his shorts, and then turned around. You know, for someone who hates me and my non-fun lifestyle, you sure do seem to enjoy trekking all the way out here to chat with me. Oh, hate is such a savage word. I prefer the term strongly dislike. That literally means the same thing. Nice to know you're an idiot as well as a piece of garbage. Creek didn't even blink at the heavy insults. Listen, Branch, I'm not here to pick a fight. Just hear me out. It's about Poppy. For a split second, fear shot through Branch. Was something wrong with her? Was she upset? Injured? Sick? Then he recalled the Flower Fun Festival incident. If something was truly wrong with the princess, Creek would never tell him, unless it would benefit himself in some cruel way. And if he did openly say anything wrong with Poppy, it was likely to be a lie. What about her? I wanted to say that I was wrong to try to convince you that Poppy doesn't care about you. She really does care about you, more than she ever cared about me. You're very special to her, that's clear to me now. You're one lucky troll, mate. Branch raised a highly suspicious eyebrow at the troll standing in front of him. 
who were seemingly apologising and praising him. But the troll standing in front of him was Creek, and Branch knew Creek better than that after all these years. That purple jug would start off the all, oh, so sugary sweet, and then end with some bitterly passive aggressive. As Branch predicted, Creek continued ever so casually. I mean, think about it. Who would ever have expected the beautiful princess would want to be with the grey outcast? The two of you are so vastly different in every aspect of life. You may as well be from different universes. He registered Branch's shifts in attitude over a span of three seconds. His cold glare became a grimace of irritation, followed by a frown clouded with doubt. Poppy is the most amazing troll. Kind-hearted, fun-loving, highly confident, a pure ray of sunshine. And you, well, you're trying your best. Branch visibly flinched at the comment, his scowl rapidly becoming tainted with uncertainty. Perhaps you have changed enough to be a suitable partner for our future queen. After all, whomever Poppy decides to be with will have to become king someday leader and role model of the entire village. Branch instantly went pale, swaying a bit as if he was going to faint. Yep, Creek definitely hit the correct nerve. I apologise, Branch. I didn't mean to intimidate you. I'm only stating the facts of- SHUT UP! Just- just get out of here! Not waiting to see whether Creek would obey or continue his speech, Branch was the one to turn and leave. He tried to run, but he could barely put one foot in front of the other. The trees and bushes around him started to blur together. He didn't have enough emotional energy to go into the bunker. He was heading in the wrong direction anyway, and instead plunked down in the middle of the forest. Branch felt nauseous. He couldn't believe he'd been so blind, so naive. Poppy was the princess, therefore the future queen. Of course her partner would have to be the king. That was pure logic. So stupidly obvious. How had he not thought of that? He was so hyper-focused on the thrill of being close to her. Her supportive words, her snuggles, her hugs, her kisses, her love. But he hadn't even considered the long term. Not even once. He couldn't be king. That wasn't even an option. A rock would make a better king than him. Hosting grand musical glittery parties, helping everyone be happy and optimistic, creating new, excitingly fun activities, keeping up with the hundreds of complex annual festivals, plus hundreds of daily, weekly, monthly events, being an inspiration to the village. He couldn't do even one of those things for ten minutes, let alone every one of them all day every day. As the princess, Poppy needed to think about what was best not just for herself, but also for the entire village. Branch loved her with all of his heart. And, crazily enough, she loved him too. But that doesn't mean they're meant to be together. If he's not good for the village, then he's no good for her. After the final breakfast event, Poppy headed down to a small winding river outside of the village, to clear her mind before the branch events. It was the same peaceful sandy spot where she and Branch hung out with on day four of their visits. She was still pretty rattled from her fight with Creek. She had managed to fake happiness all morning, but now she was worn out, and finally able to show it without trolls questioning her or worrying about her. Poppy still couldn't believe her friendship with Creek was officially over. She'd had fallouts with the occasional troll, but they would quickly work things out and make up. Or they would grow apart over time, but still get along and hang out once in a while. She'd never straight up ended a friendship. Then again, she'd never had a friend who behaved the way Creek did. Poppy was hoping a little beach would be deserted. It usually was. But since this was the one time she wanted to be completely alone, this would be the one time it was occupied. And it was occupied. The pink troll stopped in her tracks. 
There was one troll down by the river, sitting under a tree. His knees tucked up again under his chin. Judging by his drooping ears, hanging head and hunched shoulders, he looked as dejected as she felt. At the poor sight of him, Poppy's own weariness was forgotten, and she rushed over to him. Branch! His ears perked up a bit at her voice, but he didn't turn around. Poppy sat beside him. His ears had lowered again. He looked so sad. No, he looked much more than sad. He looked distraught, like he'd been drained of all hope. Poppy prayed it was just the shadows from the tree, but his skin looked greyer than stone and his dark hair was completely devoid of any colour. Even his handsome eyes barely had a trace of blue. Branch. She extended her arms to wrap Branch up in a side hug. But for the first time in a long time, he didn't return her hug. Not even slightly. Not even with one arm. Her heart ached so much she almost started to cry. Branch, what's wrong? Please, please tell me what's wrong. He stayed silent. But he was not ignoring her or avoiding the question. He was struggling to speak, as if the words were painful to say. I... I'm... I'm just... He slowly stretched his legs out in front of him. I'm worried about... us. Poppy took hold of his hand. What do you mean? He did not squeeze her hand in return. I mean, how, how are we going to make this work? What if, what if we aren't meant to be? I want this to work. Believe me, I really do. More than anything in this entire world. But I'm afraid that it can't. I really want this too, Branch. We both want the same thing. So there's no reason why we can't make it work. But it's not that simple, Poppy. You're the princess. You'll be the queen someday. How can you have a future with me? I'm not. Her solemn look told Branch she guessed what he was implying. But her quiet confidence still did not waver. Don't worry about that right now. Everything will be fine. We'll figure it out. We'll take things really slow. And... I'm not really ready for a real relationship yet anyway, unless... Poppy let go of his hand and looked down at the grass by her feet. Unless you're not looking for a real relationship. Unless you'd rather just date for a bit and then move on before things get serious. No! Branch looked mortified. Ha no! That's the last thing I want! If he was going to be with her, he wanted it to be real. He'd rather stay just friends with her than have a meaningless fling. Unless that's all she's looking for. But Poppy's relief at his answer was obvious. Oh, good. Me too. I know a lot of trolls are into that sort of thing, and that's totally great. But personally, it's not my jam. Branch was relieved too. He wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. Not just a few days or a few weeks. He wasn't just infatuated with her. He loved her with all his heart. He wanted to build a strong, lasting relationship. His next words were spoken shyly. It was not a topic Branch ever thought he'd be discussing with anyone, let alone Poppy. I'm not... I'm not looking for a serious relationship immediately. I'm not ready either, not even remotely close. I'm still adjusting to basic socialising and having friendships. But someday. Yes. He smiled, and Poppy smiled back. But as his fell, so did hers. She leaned closer. I'm glad we got our relationship figured out. But I can tell something's bothering you. He can look down at the ground again. I'm sorry. I just... I still feel like I'm a burden to you. 
She opened her mouth to object, but he cut her off. I know what you're going to say. I'm not a burden. I'm worth your time. I'm not like I used to be. And part of me knows all that too. But most of me feels like I'm still not good enough for you. I don't want to hold you back. I know I've changed. But that doesn't erase the way I used to be. No matter how much I improve, I'll forever be remembered as the grumpy loner. Creek hurt Poppy. But then again, so has Branch. Does that make me no better than him? Branch. She reached her arm over his shoulders. Your past will always be a part of you. But it doesn't define who you are. You're working so hard to be a better troll. And that is what matters. How you act today and tomorrow? That's what everyone will see. And if some don't, well, that's their loss. While his hint of colours did not return, Poppy could finally see a little spark of comfort in Branch's features. Which prompted Poppy to ask, What made you think like this all of a sudden? He studied the grass again, hesitant to answer. Poppy frowned. Creek said something, didn't he? Then his eyes widened. That reaction alone was enough to confirm her suspicion. But Branch lowered his head and nodded anyway. So Poppy pulled him into a surprisingly firm hug. Don't listen to anything that hairball says about you. Pardon my language. Branch couldn't believe his ears, to the point where he didn't even hug her back. Poppy just called someone a hairball? It was a very accurate term for Creek, but still, the positive princess was always against using insults. When Poppy pulled back, her fuchsia eyes were glowing. She reached up and placed her little hand on his cheek and spoke in the softest whisper. You may not be perfect, Branch, but you're perfect for me. His cute, shocked expression provoked her to add, We're perfect for each other. So we will make this work. I know we will. His face melted into a smile. A genuine smile, full of love and gratitude and relief. After taking a couple of seconds to appreciate his beautiful smile, Poppy shifted around so she could lie down beside him, with her head resting on his lap. At first, Branch peered around tensely. What if someone sees them? Then he glanced down at her. Her pretty pink face did not look concerned at all, eyes gently shut with a blissful smile to match. Her casual relaxation caused him to relax too. If someone sees it, so be it. Branch placed his hand on the back of her head. The simple sensation of her silky soft hair was enough to calm any remaining worries. He closed his eyes too. Everything will work out. Somehow, it'll be okay. Poppy felt Branch's thumb start to gently stroke her head. She peeked one eye open. He looked so at ease. But most importantly, his face had its usual slight bluish green tint again, and his hair was no longer dull, even though he was still in the shadows. Satisfied, Poppy snuggled in closer. She knew of many methods to relax and recharge her batteries. Make a quick scrapbook page, hum her favourite tune, skip or dance through the forest, bake and decorate cookies, look through photo albums, reorganise her plushie collection, and so many more. But snuggling with Branch was hands down the most effective way to unwind. Though he let Poppy take control of the village activities most of the time, King Peppy still continued to supervise her and assist wherever he was needed. He was quickly nearing retirement. His tower's old hair was almost more silver than magenta now, and it was rapidly losing its stretching ability. Part of Peppy was looking forward to some well-earned rest and relaxation. But he was still very much attached to the familiar routine he's known for decades. It'll be difficult for the hard-working troll to laze around and observe rather than participate. The king was pleased with his daughter's progress. She had grown into a fine princess, 
perfectly suited to take over as Queen Sunday very soon. She has made mistakes, but always learned from them. She had some rough days, but picked herself up and continued on even stronger. Poppy was the happiest and most optimistic troll in the forest, always able to brighten any dull or dark situation, able to put a smile on every face and maintain a constant order of fun. She always put her subjects before herself, sometimes excessively so, which Peppy knew she inherited from him. She is more confident in her role as a future leader than he was at her age, and has discovered unconventional ways to improve festivities that no other royal, including himself, has ever thought of. As he took a lone stroll around the quieter part of the village, Peppy pondered over some recent conversations he's had with Poppy regarding her friend Branch. Based on the strong adoration in her tone when she'd ramble on about him, it seemed this boy was becoming more than just her close friend. And that made Peppy a little bit concerned. As a father, he wanted what was best for his little girl, and as a king, he wanted what was best for his people. Branch was certainly working hard to become a better troll. He had a good heart, was loyal, and caring, and smart and he certainly treated Poppy well, and the two of them seemed very compatible with their opposing personalities. Infatuated flings and casual dating were not encouraged in the royal family, but were usually considered relatively harmless, as long as they didn't affect the royal's duties. Peppy himself had a few when he was a young prince. But when it comes to starting an official relationship, whoever the princess wants to settle down with, that troll will eventually be named king. Indeed, Branch has changed, but not to that extent, not even close. He was still extremely reserved, awkward around most trolls, highly uncomfortable in any decent sized social gathering, and had zero experience with the village's intricate fun system. No matter how kind Branch is, or how much Poppy loves him, it simply cannot work if he can't fit into the role of king. It broke Peppy's heart to think about it, but his beloved daughter may have to make the tough decision to end this relationship before it begins, for the good of the entire village. But before his worries could wander further, Peppy shook his head roughly, his moustache flapping across his cheeks. I'm getting ahead of myself. No need to worry about drowning when I'm not even near the water. There's no rush for Poppy to find a partner. I ruled for a decade and a half before I decided to settle down with Poppy's mother. There is still plenty of time for Branch to improve. Whether they end up happily together, or their feelings fade over time, or even if they must learn to move on, everything will work out as it is meant to. As if on cue, the raven-haired troll appeared up ahead, half a dozen tree lengths away, collecting various fruits from some wild trees. Using his green cane for support, Peppy made his way over. Branch didn't notice the elderly troll's approach, and was about to walk away when his name being called caused him to halt and turn around. He was surprised to see King Peppy, and even more surprised when the orange troll beckoned him over. With curiosity, and a spark of anxiety, Branch complied. It wasn't as if they'd never interacted before. Peppy had always treated him nicely, offering polite greetings and mentioning upcoming events, in a much less impulsive manner than Poppy. Branch would return a brief, neutral greeting and bluntly, but not too rudely, decline any and all activity suggestions before continuing on his way. The Elder had been one of the few trolls to actually show some genuine concern for Branch's colour loss after his grandma's accident, gently reminding him that he wasn't alone setting him up with appropriate families, checking up on him in between his raw duties, rebuilding the village and raising a toddler poppy. Peppy was the closest thing to a companion Branch has had as a great honour. But he hasn't spoken to the king in months, could be close to a year by now, and usually they only spoke if they crossed paths. Branch could think of only one reason why Peppy, aka Poppy's father, would seek him out. She shares everything with him. So she must have told him about them. 
Would the village leader accept him? They were not technically in a relationship, but they were certainly more than just friends now. Was Branch about to be told he's not a suitable partner for the princess? He still worried that was true, despite all of Poppy's sweet reassurance. Was his biggest fear about to be confirmed? Poppy may love him and believe in him, but he's still technically an outcast. And if Peppy doesn't approve? Forcing the pessimistic thoughts to the back of his mind, he took the final few steps until he was standing in front of the older troll. Branch swallowed, took a deep breath, and gave her a respectful nod. Good afternoon, King Peppy. Hello, Branch. I apologise for interrupting your food gathering. Oh, no, that's all right. You didn't interrupt. I was just finishing up. Another deep breath. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Well, if you have a minute or two to spare. I thought you and I could go for a walk. Have a chat? Dread. That was the feeling that hit Branch in the gut. A chat? Could Peppy be any more vague? His amber eyes were unreadable. His tone gave no hint as to how this could go. Trying not to let his inner emotions show, a skill he was getting rusty at thanks to Poppy, Branch replied, Uh, sure, of course. His voice squeaked a bit, but if Peppy noticed, he didn't point it out. With the elder leading, the two trolls took a stroll through the woods nearby following a wide, grassy path. Eventually, Branch offered him a piece of fruit from the basket. Peppy accepted with a thank you and picked out a mango. The longer Poppy's dad stayed silent, the more unsettled Branch became. After taking his time finishing off the mango, the elder finally spoke. But it was just random and rather pointless comments. How the leaves are late in changing colours this year. How he loves apple pie, but pumpkin is his favourite. How he may visit the beach again before dinner. But that was all. If Peppy was planning to forbid them to be together, Branch wished he would just get it over with. He had been trying hard to disregard Creek's words about the future with Poppy being frowned upon, or even impossible. Trying very hard to think like Poppy and be optimistic about their relationship working out. But Branch was beginning to think this conversation may turn out similar. And if it does, Creek's opinion may not matter to him, but Poppy's father, a.k.a. the king? Finally, Peppy began the inevitable talk. Poppy mentioned you have some hidden talents, such as painting and even poetry. Uh, yes, that's true. Just as hobbies. Branch felt a slight blush forming. He silently prayed Poppy didn't give a detailed explanation of his poetry skills. If she did, Peppy made no comment about it. There are a few quaint and little art clubs throughout the village. Have you ever considered giving them a try? No, I... I'm not really that serious about painting or writing. They're just things I do to pass the time. They're nothing special. Poppy thinks they are. She thinks that you are special. Cue another pang of dread. Much more so than her other friends, even... Yep, dread from head to toe. Here it comes. It seems you and my daughter have grown very close. Branch was trying to breathe, but it felt like he was underwater. Y yes A few seconds passed, and Peppy didn't say a word, merely maintaining a side-along stare with expectant amber eyes. Oh, hair, what else was Branch supposed to say? That he loves Poppy with all his heart? Even though he's treated her like dirt for years? Insist he's the right troll for her, even though he probably isn't? Beg for Peppy to allow them to start a relationship, even though them being together may very well not be a good choice? So Branch let out a defeated sigh, his ears drooping. He halted and looked down at his feet, and muttered, I know what you're going to say. At that, Peppy halted, looking very surprised. Oh? You do? Yes. Forcing himself to make eye contact with the king, Branch explained. I realise I have no right to wish for a relationship with the princess. I'm just the grey grump who's lived outside the village in a locked up bunker for half his life, who never wants to do anything fun. I highly doubt I can be... ever. 
I highly doubt that I can ever be what she needs me to be. What the village needs me to be. Not that this will make me any more worthy of her. But I just want you to know. I truly do care about Poppy. I would do anything for her. And I want her to be happy. Branch's ears drooped even more, and his gaze fell back down to the ground in shame. Which are all empty words, considering how I've treated her all these years. He sighed again. <sighs> I can't take back everything I've done. And above all, I want what's best for her. So I'm... Peppy's orange hand was in front of Branch then, signalling for silence. So Branch complied. But the king's expression was... Warm? With a slightly teasing smile, even. As I suspected. You have no idea what I was going to say. Branch stayed silent, staring intently, and desperately waiting for him to extend that thought. So Peppy explained. I know you've had your issues in the past. However, you also have the potential to become a great troll. There is plenty of good in you, much more than you realise. I can't say what the future holds. And really, who can? He put his hand on the younger troll's shoulder. But I trust my daughter. And I trust you. Provided you treat Poppy right, and you continue to make her happy, that's all that matters to me for the time being. The future will work out however it is meant to. Yeah? Peppy was right. This was not at all what Branch had expected him to say. Uh, y yeah. He had mentally braced himself for criticism, already wondering how he could make Poppy accept that they could only be friends. How to explain that he was indeed not good enough for her. How to cope with getting over her after his dreams had been so close to coming true. And now it looked like he might not have to do any of that. The king gave him a single firm nod and patted him on the shoulder. Good. Now I better go and check up on the short sports tournament. It's Poppy's first year covering the event solo, and it tends to get a bit overwhelming, even for an experienced leader. Care to dark along? Uh, maybe another time. I, I need to finish with... Ranch held up his nearly full basket of fruit, words still failing him. Very well, King Peppy nodded respectfully. It's been nice talking to you, Branch. Hopefully I get to see you again soon. Branch watched the orange elder follow the curved path ahead, until he disappeared around the corner. He suddenly felt lightheaded. Whether it was from the unexpected praise, or the fact that he had been holding his breath for most of the conversation. Poppy's father was not about to throw a party to celebrate their relationship. But he wasn't opposed to them being together either. He was being cautious and realistic but also supportive and open-minded. Somehow, Peppy's wait-and-see neutral perspective gave Branch a hint of pure confidence, a calm but strong little hope he had never felt before. Maybe, maybe we do have a chance. Maybe Poppy and I really could have a future together. That evening, Poppy invited Biggie, Smidge, Guy, Cooper, Satin, Chenilles and Suki over for a slumber party at her pod. After dinner, dessert, board games, scrapbooking, more dessert, and an intense pillow fight, the gang called it a night. The next morning, right after a delicious pancake breakfast made by Poppy, she had to take off to help her dad with preparing for a complex seasonal festival. With the Pring princess gone, the snack pack collected their things, preparing to leave her pod. I'll have to leave the festival a bit early, Biggie was saying. I promised Mr. Dinkles I would take him to the park before noon. Do you think Branch will be at the festival? Satin asked no one in particular. It was her sister who answered. Possibly. He's made quick appearances here and there. Suki spoke next, grinning. I think as long as Poppy's there, they'll be willing to give it a try. Maybe Branch has a crush on Poppy! Cooper exclaimed, letting out one of his signature laughs. Though the pink long-necked troll meant it jokingly, the others nodded. It seems like he kinda does. Guy agreed loudly. Wait! Cooper realised. 
Maybe Branchy does have a crush on Poppy. It kind of seems like Poppy might have a bit of a crush on him too. Vicky commented. She's definitely interested in him. Satin and Chenille spoke up, exchanging an identical sly grin. Girl sure talks about him a lot. Suki continued. How many times did she mention him last night? Biggie's answer was a dozen. The twins simultaneously answered two dozen at least. Guy's simple answer was many times. While Scooper's was a lot. Smidge's answer was a lost girl. Suki was still grinning. Poppy kind of talks about Branch the way Smidge talks about Milton. Hi! The little troll yelped, her yellow cheeks burning bright red. Branch actually is a really nice guy. Biggie admitted, I've had a few nice chats with him. I never would have even considered it before, but now I think Poppy and Branch would be a good couple for each other. Guy admitted, they're surprisingly compatible. Certainly better match than, well, a previous troll. No one was eager to mention that troll. The troll who had used to be their close friend. Their friend who seemed so kind and laid back. Then turned around and hurt their sweet princess and made Braj out to be the bad guy. Biggie summed up everyone's thoughts. He acted like a nice guy, but turned out to be mean. While well, Branch seems like a mean guy, but turned out to be nice. Everyone nodded again, surprised to learn that not everyone is always what they seem. Then Cooper gushed, I think Poppy and Branch would make a really cute couple. Think they'll officially get together? Chenille asked the group. Oh, that's a tough one. Cooper scrunched up his face as he pondered the options. They might, but they also might not. They like each other, but maybe not that much. I don't think they will. Smidge gave a straight answer. It seems like more of a temporary crush to me. Poppy's not into flings, and I doubt Branch would be. So they probably wouldn't do that either. I say close friends forever. Maybe a date or two, but nothing more. Sorry, Smidge, but I have to disagree. Suki said, putting her hands on her hips in firm confidence. I say Poppy and Branch will get together. And I give them less than a month. What? A month? No way. I can't agree nor disagree with either of you, Guy admitted to the girls. While I believe they may get together eventually, I don't think it will be any time soon. Poppy is still focusing on her princess responsibilities, and Branch is still quite reserved. So I give it way longer than a month. Then I give it way, way, way longer than a month. As in a thousand years? It started out as a friendly debate and ended with an official bet. DJ Suki, Guy Diamond and Smidge each briefly repeated their bets. Less than a month, more than a month and a thousand years. Then they exchanged through the ritual of a three-way handshake while twisting their hair together to form a giant orange silver turquoise braid. All right, Biggie announced. Now that that's all settled, we'd better go to the festival before we miss out on all the funnest parts. Shouldn't we make a bet on whether or not Branch will be there? Chenille suggested. We can make a non-formal bet along the way. Satin decided. Speaking of which, last one to the festival is a rotten cupcake. The pink troll bolted over to her suitcase, dragging her blue sister along by their conjoined hair. The others copied, grabbing their belongings as swiftly as possible and sprinting out the door. Smidge was the first one there, as usual, being the most agile of the group. Cooper was the rotten cupcake by a few footsteps, but the snack pack was more focused on trying to spot Branch than worrying about who lost the race. It turned out Biggie, Smidge, Chenille and Suki were right. Branch was indeed at the festival. He was over by a far snack table, standing with no, none other than Poppy. She was laughing hysterically at him. Under closer inspection, they noticed Branch was holding an empty plate, with icing and crumbs all over the front of him, and the rest of the dessert in the grass by his feet. Poppy teased, <laughs> Branch, you're supposed to eat the cake, not wear it. <laughs> I suppose I didn't quite get the memo. 
His remark was sarcastic, but even from a distance, the snack bag could see the stifled smile and friendly gleam in his eyes. He even laughed a bit before adding, I guess I'm just trying to be a klutz like you. Hey! She gave him a little punch on the arm, and he laughed a second time. Then she altered her playful tone. No, you know what? Keep dreaming, Branch. Because you could never be as clumsy as me. Only I have that much talent. The seven onlookers beamed at the cute exchange. It was almost bizarre to see Branch laughing. But it was a wonderful kind of bizarre. It seemed like only yesterday his reaction to such a situation would have been annoyance, followed by a cold retort and ended with him storming off. Biggie, Smidge, Cooper, Guy, Suki, Saturn and Chenille happily rushed over to join their close friend Poppy and their newest friend Branch. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Oh boy, I really like that one. One thing I've noticed throughout this fic is that every time Creek tries to interfere, it takes less and less time for hit for Poppy and Branch to come back together from that argument. It takes less time every time. And I like that there are different reactions. The snack pack making a bet, Creek trying to interfere, as Poppy says air hop as Poppy says hairball, and Peppy being realistic but supportive. I really love that. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, girls, and non-binary pals. I'll see you. I'll see you in another video. Take care.